It's early morning here in Germany and I already love this day. It's not because it's grey and cold outside obviously, but it's because today I will be trying out my favorite JavaScript framework Vue.js, which has gotten even better since the last time I tried it in 2018, when I was a broke student and was building a startup with my friend, but I definitely remember that we fell in love with it pretty quickly due to its simplicity and a low entry barrier. When I said it's gotten better, I meant that Vue.js is now on version 3 and has some big updates and cool new features. One of the biggest features is the Composition API, which honestly I haven't really tried it so far, but I heard a lot of good things about it. So what we're gonna be doing today is first I will go and dive deep into the documentation of the Composition API and then we will work on a small pizza customization app together and we'll work on the Composition API there. Because I think everybody likes pizza, right? And I usually order mine with extra pineapples. Anyway, let's get started. It got dark really quickly, so I had to turn on the lights. But anyway, if you have never used Vue or any other JavaScript framework, don't worry, this video is gonna be pretty simple and you will still get the gist of it. With that said, let's take a look at our app that we're gonna be working on. So imagine we are some kind of a pizzeria and currently our restaurant is so small that we are offering only one type of a pizza, which is a bacon pizza. And customers who land on this web app can add extra ingredients themselves. For example, as I said, I like pineapples, so I will type in um, an extra pineapple that I want on my pizza. Not double E, but double P, exactly like this. And I press add, and this ingredients list get updated. Very simple, right? And the, the way it looks in the code is also pretty intuitive. So the whole pizza cart that we just saw is inside this section tag. We have an image of a pizza, we have a title, we have a price, we have the description, just so that you see, price and a description is here. And we have the most important place is basically the controls. So users have an input tag where they can type a custom ingredient that they wanna add. And they also have an add button which basically grabs the value of this input and adds it to the ingredients list. In the ingredients list, we are looping through the ingredients that we have with the help of v4, which is a special attribute uh, inside view. And we are outputting a single ingredient here. The business logic of all of this is here down in the data. By the way, I wanna say that I have already taken care of the styles so we have a CSS and a separate file. But in case if you wanna play along or start this app yourself, just improve it further, feel free to clone my GitHub repository and simply follow the steps in the readme. I will put everything in the description so that you can easily help me out with the restaurant, so to say. But anyway, since home.view is our main file that we're gonna be looking at today, I will keep the bar closed. So everything that you see here is actually the Options API. Options API is the standard way we were doing our business logic in JavaScript, I mean in Vue.js, in Vue 1 and Vue 2. But in version 3, we now have a Composition API, which is actually 100% optional, which means if you upgrade to Vue version 3, you can still use it the same way that you see here with the Options API. Now, before we start rewriting everything in a Composition API, I wanna explain why the Options API might not the best option. Imagine you have way more data because this app is pretty simple. Imagine you have way more variables and you have not a single method, but you have maybe 20 or 50. And now look how big our file is. If you would define some kind of a variable here, here, and you need to access it in one of the methods here, you literally have to scroll up and down. And not that scrolling itself is a problem, but trust me, I've seen bigger components and more complicated components. And there the code can get not messy, but more complicated and more difficult to structure. So the way we deal with this problem in the Composition API, or actually eliminate this problem, let me revert everything first, 
yeah, everything reverted. The way we do it is by putting all the important chunks or, or all the related chunks all together so that we don't have to go to the end of the file in order to find the function that we need. We basically put all the variables and methods all close together so that it's easier to, to work on a simple like uh, logic of the app, so to say. Anyway, enough talking, let's rewrite this thing in a composition API. So first thing that we do is we actually get rid of everything because we no longer have the data method here. Instead, what we have is a setup method. Um, looks kind of similar to, to, to data, but it's actually not. And here inside the setup method, we will use put basically the variables that we had here. And you declare them as variables again. So what was it? It was pizza title and pizza price. So pizza title was bacon, right? Bacon pizza. Bacon pizza. Const pizza price was, I believe, eight. And const pizza description was I don't want to type out the whole <laughs> description that was there, but we'll rather say rather rather say some description that is important. And like this, we now are going to have our ingredients input, uh, basically the variable that holds the ingredients ingredients input value, and this was basically an empty string. And we will also have simply ingredients list, which was an array. What else did we have? Also, we had a function, as you can see, a function called add ingredient that will basically add these values into the array. So let's create a arrow function, <laughs> so to say. Um, add ingredient is equal to an anonymous function ingredients yeah but anyway um, first of all I want to demonstrate you something let's first look out that we are actually adding an ingredient so adding an ingredient like this the reason you see that they are all red is because we are not using them anywhere and if you save it like this, you will get an error. Uh, some kind of a value is used, uh, assi uh, is assigned a value, but never used. So in order to make it work in the composition API, you actually need to return all of them. Return like this, we open brackets, we return a pizza title, we return the price, we return the description, we also return the, the input value. We also return the whole <laughs> ingredients list because we're also showing them. And we return the method as well. Now, everything should be fine. So let's save it and go over to the browser. Okay, we don't have any ingredients because <laughs> I left it open. I left it empty. Um, it was basil, not basic, basil and mozzarella. Let's save it again, go to the browser. We have basil and mozzarella just like it was before. Now go back to the code. I want to see this console log out as soon as we press the add button. Let's just verify this. Let's try something as a test. And we get this, right? Now a, a little detour. I want to actually change the pizza title. Don't ask me why, but just as a test, I want to make sure that I'm able to change the pizza title. So what I will do is I will pizza change the pizza title to Schmaken. Bacon Schmaken. Not a funny joke. Um, but I don't care. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's a constant. Let's first <laughs> change it to let so that we can reassign a value. 
So as Schmaken is in place and I expect that as soon as I press add and it will take the value that is here and uh, no wait it will not take this value it will simply change it to Schmaken. But as you see bacon is still bacon. I wonder why? Well I have an answer for it. The reason is values that are inside the setup are not dynamic by default or reactive so to say. So what we need to do to make them reactive is we actually need to import a reference import oops ref from view like this. Now what reference is? Reference is simply an object that has different properties. I will I will demonstrate it in a second. First, let's wrap everything in a reference like this. We also wrap the number inside the reference. We wrap the description inside the reference. And we yeah, we wrap the input value in the reference. Literally everything. We also wrap the array inside the reference. And um, but we don't know we don't wrap the function inside the reference. So um, you see, okay, <laughs> let's change it to let again. Now it should work, right? Because ref, as I said, we if we wrap everything inside the reference, it should work. Let's test it. Nope, still doesn't work. Ah, uh, I need to explain you something. So I want to see what the ref is. Let's let's just. Uh, console log out the pizza title when we press the add button and see what's inside it. As you can see, I pressed the add button. As you can see here in the logs, maybe I will make it bigger for you. Um, it's basically, it has a value, it has depth, I don't know, it has some internal values, but one of them is actually the value, and value is bacon pizza. And in order to change the value in the code itself, what we need to do is make sure that we reference pizza title like this. So we change the actual value of it. Now let's save and go to the browser. Now I press add and you can see that it's schmaken. Woohoo! Yes. Woohoo! Yes, we did it. Um, <laughs> Uh, that was actually silly. Let's not make it schmaken. But let's instead do whatever we actually need to do. What we need to do is update the ingredients array, right? Now, now what we're gonna do is we will simply add the input value into the ingredient as we were supposed to, but we also will make sure that we use the value property of it. So value push since it's an array and we are going to push the current ingredient input value but with also its actual value. And now let's remove this console lock that we don't need and let's make it a const because we are not uh, making it a schmaken anymore <laughs> and let's go back to the browser and I will app, add a pineapple and you can see that Yes, pineapple is added and we use the composition API. So what I also like to do, since this is solving the problem that was in the options API that you have different chunks of code very from, far from each other, now you can literally put everything together in a, in, a, in a single chunk. What I also like to do is simply add some comments for clarity, like my variables are here, my methods are here and I can have some computed properties, I can have some watchers. Um, I will link uh, I, I will I will leave a link to the view documentation so that you can learn more advanced stuff. But for now just we have just variables and methods in our example. Now you can ask me, do I need to rewrite every component that I have into a composition API? The answer is no. 
you can actually combine the options API with the composition API. What, what people usually do, if your component is really small, so imagine your component is has a single H1 title, why would you rewrite it in a composition API? Just leave it as it is, as a data here, and just a one value in the options API. And just the way we use the refs, you can also import things like computed to use computer properties also inside the setup. You can also use a lifecycle hooks such as mounted, created, and they are just renamed. So it's on mounted, on activated, on, uh, on unmounted, as you can see here. But you get the idea, right? If you have some experience with Vue, you already know this advanced stuff. Another bonus thing that I would like to also mention is that with Composition API, it's pretty much similar to React hooks. So imagine you have different pages. So imagine you have different pages like this, and all of them are adding ingredients. So all of them have an ingredient button. There's a very important concept in programming called dry, don't repeat yourself, which means you will have to if you don't if you don't use the dry principle, you will basically have to use this add ingredient method in every on every page. But the composition API lets you avoid this. What you will do is here inside the well next to components, you will create a folder called composables. And you will simply yeah, create a view file and put everything that you have inside the setup there so that then you can you make this uh, file reusable and you will import this composable in this home.view and you will import it in a different page where you're also using it and you will, it will be just shared across multiple files so just like react hooks you can reuse multiple react hooks at the same time hope this video was interesting to watch and you haven't fallen asleep yet if you have fallen asleep then you missed all the fun if you have any questions write them down in the comments if you have any remarks or i made any mistakes write them down in the comments too and if you have any video requests for the future please let me know and write them down in the comment section as well have a nice rest of the day and goodbye